jury's decision not to indict Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson in the shooting death of 18-year-old Michael Brown has been met with renewed discussions and debates all across the country. It's also sparked protests, including right here in Boston. Now, here on Urban Update, we've been following the case and have been providing a platform for discussion on several occasions, and today we extend that discussion with two more community voices. Joining us this morning is Jamal Crawford. He is a vocal community activist and publisher and editor of Blackstonian, which is an online newspaper with periodic print editions. And, of course, Kevin Peterson. He is founder of the New Democracy Coalition and an op-ed contributor and columnist for the Boston Herald. Welcome to the show again, and uh, bienvenidos. Good to be here. Yes. All right. I'm going to start with you, Jamal. Uh, let's get right to it. How do you feel this morning? Sunday morning, it's been, you know, beginning of the week has happened. How are you feeling now? Unfortunately, we've been here before, and I feel the same way that I felt after uh, verdicts time and time again across the nation and right here in Boston and Massachusetts have returned the same type of uh, finding, which is no wrongdoing by the officer, no charges to be filed, no accountability, no responsibility. So I'm disheartened, uh, you know, but not surprised. You're not surprised. Now, which comes really set great segue to you because you wrote a, a column earlier this week, mm -hmm. America is still a divided nation because... You have that feeling, but then there are other people with completely different feelings. And, and it's almost, again, unfortunately, along racial lines, correct? Correct. Uh, and, and it's, you know, I, I agree with uh, Jamal. Uh, the Ferguson ruling, or the lack of an indictment, um, is tragic. Uh, and it indicates, uh, is indicative of a, a continuing divided nation. We saw it most recently, a few years ago, with Trayvon Martin. We see the nation divided again uh, this year around this, uh, this lack of, of, of an indictment. It's sad. Um, you know, um, Attorney General Holder said earlier this year that uh, we, no, I'm sorry, in 2009, that we continue to remain a nation of cowards in terms of getting to the bottom of our race problems. Um, this is just is yet another example about how, what a sad state we are, uh, locally and nationally. Yeah. Now, as editor and publisher of a media outlet, I am sure, and of a media outlet that caters to a particular community, because you are, you know, by the, by the name Blackstonian, and I know, you know, a, a voice for the uh, black community here in Boston. What's some of the discussions or point of views that you think need to happen within the community? Not the discussion amongst all the other communities, but within the African-American community first. Well, first of all, often Sometimes we have kind of selective amnesia. So we have to do a, a far better job of keeping record of what it has ha what has happened to us. That way we're better prepared to deal with uh, uh, ways that we can develop solutions to what has happened to us. So right here in Boston, first of all, the local conversation mm -hmm. needs to be about what has happened right here in Boston. There have been police killings of civilians right here in Boston, uh, three since 2013, 29 since 1988. So when we talk about Ferguson or New York, when we talk about uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, Philly, where this is happening all over the country, we also have to be cognizant that this is something that happens right here in good Boston strong, one Boston. What happened to all that? We have to remember that it happens here as well, and that's a conversation that has to happen locally with the citizens, the community at large, but as well as the leadership, many of which have often, uh, uh, who are supposed to be community advocates and often uh, time, time and time again seem to be advocating on behalf of the police as opposed to the community. What do you think of that, Kevin? I think that's right on. I, I think there, there needs to, to, you know, outside of the, um, the external conversations around policy that needs to happen, within the black community, within the African American community, there needs to be discussions around uh, simply how we teach our young men to comport themselves uh, when confronted by the, by the police. That's sad to say. Uh, but we have to have those conversations. There has to be an internal uh, discussion and strategy around uh, how we respond to law enforcement that has historically been hostile to, to, to uh, black men. And then at, at, um, we also have to, you know, we, we, we wouldn't be having a, a fair conversation if we didn't uh, uh, comment on what, a, what um, Michael Brown was doing prior to being shot. Doesn't justify the shooting, but there's, there's videotape. That um, where he's apparently uh, involved in a um, a store robbery. Now, one does not deserve the other, of course. But we also have to look at this other issue that if, in fact, this was Michael Brown robbing the store, um, how do we um, uh, manage our young men uh, internally from within our communities? And, and, and along those lines, I also want to uh, give folks 
uh, a little preview of what happens. I'm curious in what happens in the black community when you're talking about the looting. I've heard from members of other communities saying, well, why do they, meaning African American community in Ferguson, react that way, burning their own businesses, their own, you know, causing all of that? Is that the appropriate way? What kind of conversation happens within your group in terms of your friends when you talk about the aftermath and the violence? What, what kind of discussion that goes on? Well, if we're talking about looting, vandalism, violence, uh, uh, burning, arson, uh, I don't think that any amount that the black, Latino communities uh, could do, uh, first of all, would even amount to what happens after a normal sporting event in this country. Second of all, it certainly, well, on the on the eve of Thanksgiving, right, it certainly wouldn't amount to what happened to people of color on, on the shores of this land. So I don't think that the, the looting, the vandalism, all, all this type of uh, domestic terrorism that they've even tossed around and whatnot, I don't even think it, it, it amounts to... But you don't justify it. I mean, do you justify it? Uh, I can't I can't justify it, but at the same token, uh, we want to uh, look at one and, and, and pass a judgment on one, but we don't want to look at the totality of, of the other. Well, so it, I think it, it's a response. It can never be uh, justified. Um, <clears throat> violence is wrong. Uh, violence within your own community uh, is, is, uh, is, is tragic. Uh, President Obama is absolutely correct. He's never seen any civil rights policy, any voting rights policy, any housing policy uh, come through um, looting and rioting. Um, we're all Americans, and, we're, we're, and, and America isn't perfect, as, as this, this um, incident is testament to. But we have to understand that, um, that the law are the, is the rule. It certainly struck a chord across the country. There's mm -hmm. been over 170 protests not outside of Ferguson. That's had right. it here in Boston. So this is a subject matter that uh, we will continue. Thank you for coming. Enjoy your rest of your Thanksgiving weekend. All right. Thank, Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank All you. right. Okay. When we return, using education as a means to transform the neighborhoods of Dorchester. All the details coming right up right here on Urban Update.